All right, so the next step is to prepare it for export so that it can then be brought into ArcGIS Pro. So in preparing it for export, uh, what you really need to know is that you want to first clip and edit things down. You know, that it just means like get rid of some of this extra stuff here. Maybe get rid of some mesh that's not quite accurate. So do that, hit delete. Right. You may even want to do one of these where you go model, gradual selection, connected component size, and bring it up to 99, and then hit delete. And what that's doing is getting rid of particles that may have a, occurred during the meshing process, or even when you're slicing it up using the editing tools. And that just kind of cleans up your model a bit. Um, but then once you've done that, you're going to want to create a model that has fewer faces. All right, fewer polygons. So right now we're working with 1.5 million. Let's bring it down to 100K, 100,000. So you there, you just hit Tools, you go to Mesh, and then Decimate Mesh, and we'll put in 100,000, and we'll hit OK. It will ask you this dialog, it'll just say Replace Default Model, you want to hit no, even though it's trying to get you to hit yes, you would say no here. And the reason why is because you want it to produce another model with fewer faces. So that way, if I wanted to, I can go back to the original by double clicking here. Now I'm working with the one with 1.5 million. Double click again, and I'm back to the one with 100. But what it will do is it'll remove the texture that you had put on there, but you're going to want to retexture it. Just basic workflow. Okay. So once it's retextured and everything looks good, I'll just go to the one that I had previously done. And you've trimmed it up the way you want to. It's ready for export. You just have to go in here, go to the model you want to export, right click it, hit export model, and then find your export folder, the three folder structure, and put it right in there. Right. In this case it's still F7, I just hit save. Uh, I'll replace mine, but it'll be brand new for you probably. And I always pick PNG for my texture. I'll leave it in a local coordinate system, specifically because our project, we're working in a local grid that we had created using a total station, and I'll hit OK. Uh, this will export your 3D model and with the 100,000 faces. And that way we can import it into ArcGIS Pro at a reduced uh, mesh size so that we can actually uh, increase our performance in the program. All right, so as that's kind of saving down, what I'm going to do is go into ArcGIS Pro, where I already have the Insula uh, brought in. And to bring in any of these 3D models that I already have in here, I just use the same workflow. Uh, and that is, I would use the Import 3D Models tool. So that's under Analysis, Tools. And then you can just use the search menu here and type in Import 3D Files. All right. And that's the tool that you'll be using. So this is under Geoprocessing, one of these tools in the toolbox. Right? So you click that tool, um, when you're ready to start importing it here, let me see if I already have F, nope, I do not. Um, I'll go to search for my file, the 3D file that I want to bring in. This may take a moment. There we go. And I believe I have mine on the hard drive that I'm working on. Photogrammetry. Archaeological areas, I'm working the F area, and here's F7. Right. Bring in that OBJ file. Uh, it'll pop up like this and kind of add additional text to the name. Let's say import 3D files. I oftentimes will just remove that ending. So it just, I want it to be what I called it. Um, and then I'll use the same coordinate system that I'm using for other 3D files in my project. In this case, we are using. WGS 1984 Web Mercator Auxiliary Sphere, because this coordinate system is the one that dovetails 
with the online web scene in ArcGIS Online. So you'll want to use this for our project here. Uh, if you're working on a different project, you may actually want to use a different coordinate system. But just know you have to look at the limitations for the online web scene if you're planning on putting it there. Uh, and then you just hit Run. It'll take about 20 seconds to actually import this multi-patch, is what they call 3D models here in ArcGIS Pro. It'll import it into your 3D geodatabase. So whatever the, the home geodatabase for your project, it's going to pull it right into there. Um, oftentimes it gets stuck at like 4% and then finishes pretty quickly. So if it, you feel like it's getting stuck, you should be just fine. There we go. So it's imported, turned green, meaning success. Uh, in theory, it should be over here in the F area. So we can check that out by turning off our insula model. And there it is, right where it needs to be. And as you can see, we've been doing that for all of our other excavated models, or excavation models, and they articulate where they're supposed to go in space. So here it is, F. Um, as you can see, performance is pretty good because we've decimated our model, uh, but I also am working on a high-performance laptop, which actually helps us out. Uh, from there, then you're going to want to actually put it online, and the way to do that is by going to uh, Create 3D Object Scene Layer Content. It's a different tool, also in your toolbox here. Just search for it by title, and you'll then put your 3D model as the input data set. You'll have to designate a new name for it, or the same name, but it's going to save it as a scene layer package file. All right. If I go in here, I can just put it under export and create a new item. I call it scene layer package. All right. And I'll double click so I can go in that folder. And I'm going to call this one F underscore 7. I'll hit save. Make sure that I'm using that same coordinate system from before. So I, one of my previous layers or I go searching for it. Right. And then hit run. Um, and this might actually take a little bit, maybe a half a minute to a minute. Um, but it's actually packaging this file in a way that's going to make it much easier to upload into ArcGIS Online. And when you do upload it in ArcGIS Online, what you'll want to do is just add it as a new item, um, put it with all your other project files, and then when you open a new web scene, you can add this file into the web scene. So there we have it. It's already complete. Um, I can actually look for our scene layer package now in my file structure. And there it is. It's just a single file, SLPK. Now it's ready to go ahead and upload to ArcGIS Online. All right, and that's it.